still do those things today. Or is that part of Jesus' ministry history? Can Jesus do things at Simpson Park Camp that you and I will both see and experience that will bring amazement, astonishment, and an overwhelming sense of wonder. Have you ever noticed how many hymn writers use the word amazed? I wanted this morning, and I want to sing with John Newton, Amazing Grace. Anybody keeping track of how often we're going to use the word amazing? I'm up to 183. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Or a more modern version of that, my chains are gone. I've been set free. My Savior's ransomed me, and like a flood, his mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. Down our way in Wilmore, our favorite song, that if it's not in heaven, will they have second thoughts about wanting to go there? <laughs> not really. It's Charles Wesley, and can it be? If you hear the seminary students, or if you hear the college students sing Amazing Grace, I guarantee you, it will send sweat down your back. And I love that line that says, Amazing love. How can it be that thou, my God, should die for me. Again, a more contemporary version of Chris Tomlin. Amazing love, I know it is true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. Or Isaac Watts. We sing at the cross at Christmas, at, at, at Easter time. It goes, part of it goes this way. Was it for crimes that I had done? Have you noticed how many of these old hymns begin with a question? Question mark. Or exclamation mark. Was it for crimes that I had done? He groaned upon that tree. Amazing pity. Grace unknown and love beyond degree. And I love to sing that old gospel song written in the early 1900s. You may never have heard it. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. And I wonder, I wonder how he could love me. Do you see it? Amazing grace. Amazing love. Amazing pity, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. Well, we've been talking a lot about things that Jesus did that amazed people. Let me turn that around, class. Was Jesus himself ever amazed? He amazed, did he ever, was he ever amazed? Well, let me begin by saying he was never amazed by the things that we're often amazed by when we see them in other people. For instance, I don't think Jesus was ever amazed by anybody's wealth or their stock investments, or their portfolio. I don't think Jesus was ever amazed by 
the salary anybody made or the kind of house that they lived in or the kind of car that they drove. And this kind of hits home. He was never amazed by anybody's educational achievements. Wow, you're really smart. And interest, well, perhaps most interesting of all, he was never amazed by even success in ministry. We're going to talk about that in a different dimension tomorrow morning, or some morning down the road. But you know, by God's good grace, I've been doing what I've been doing this morning for the last 50 years. And I think I've preached from time to time sermons you could call passable. But never once, never once have I ever heard Jesus say, wow. That was amazing. Where'd you, where'd you get that from? So what amazed him? Two times, and only two times. Number one, Mark chapter 6, verse 5, tells us that Jesus came to a certain place where for the only time, class, for the only time, the scriptures say he was not able to do any miracles there. It was a shut up for the master. And then verse 6 goes on to say, and he was amazed. Jesus was amazed at their lack of faith. That's one thing that caused Jesus to say, wow. And then the opening verses of Luke chapter 7 tell us about a Roman soldier who had a servant who was seriously ill. You're familiar with the story, I'm sure. He said to Jesus, I'm not even worthy that you could come under my house. Just speak the word. Just speak the word here. And my servant back home will become well. Luke chapter 7 verse 9 says, and when Jesus heard this, he was amazed. And he said, I've not found such faith even in Israel. That must have shook people up. <laughs> I had to go outside to find somebody's faith. That would amaze me. Those are the only two times the scripture records that Jesus was amazed. I'm almost finished. Now to be sure, Jesus did not come to our planet primarily to amaze us. Just being amazed at Jesus is not a ticket into heaven. There is no verse in scripture, I can absolutely guarantee, you, there is no verse in scripture that says the Son of Man has come to seek and amaze the lost. Save the lost, yes. In fact, if you go through those 10 of 16 chapters in the Gospel of Mark, you will find that some of the people who were amazed at something Jesus said and did were the same people who orchestrated his death. Pilate, Pilate stood before Jesus and he was amazed, says Mark. He was absolutely amazed. But he still handed Jesus over to be crucified. And his disciples, his twelve, 
or at least his 11, who had been following him for three years and themselves were amazed at Jesus. When the chips were down, they forsook him and they fled. Yet, we need to hear Joshua 3, 5 as we begin family camp. My part, my part, is to be where God wants me to be. That's what it means to consecrate yourself. Be available. Be open. The amazing things are God's work. My part, A. His part, much bigger, much more important, the amazing things. So that's my prayer for myself. It's Shirley's prayer. We have borne this camp before the Lord in prayer. And maybe even this morning as we close this first morning worship service, there may be some of you who would just like to slip out and moment or two at the altar and just say, Lord, I'm open. I'm ready. I'm available. Nothing between you and me. And now it's up to you to do the rest. If you'd like to do that as our brother leads us in a closing prayer, the altar is open.